Research shows that menopausal women gain up to 14% more visceral fat. That's the dangerous belly fat that wraps around your organs, even when their weight stays exactly the same. This is important to understand because you're not going to see this happening unless you're really paying attention. 14%, the same scale number, completely different body. Nancy, one of our patients, 60 years old, a grandmother, and she came to us after losing 30 pounds on her own. She should have been celebrating. Instead, she'd been stuck for three months. She was eating about 1,100 calories a day and watching her belly get bigger while the scale refused to move. I remember her saying, Dr. Jones, it feels like my body is turned against me. The moment I hit menopause, it was like a flip just completely switched to my body. I'm Dr. Jones DC and I lead the coaching department at our nationwide GLP-1 and peptide clinic where I coach thousands of patients alongside our prescribing physicians. This passion of mine comes from my own 100 pound weight loss journey and learning the hard way that hormones matter more than willpower. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly why menopause triggers this belly fat trap and give you the complete protocol to escape it. Because here's what most doctors won't tell you. This isn't about eating less or exercising more. There's a hormonal switch that got flipped in your body. And until you address that, no amount of willpower is going to fix this. So let me show you what's actually happening inside of your body right now. Before menopause, estrogen acts like a fat traffic controller. It directs where your body stores fat. And for most of your life, it's been routing fat to the subcutaneous storage. That's the fat underneath your skin, in your hips, and your thighs. Annoying, maybe, but metabolically, pretty harmless. Then menopause hits, estrogen levels drop, and suddenly the traffic controller goes offline. Without estrogen directing traffic, Traffic, the fat gets rerouted. Instead of hips and thighs, it heads straight to your midsection, your belly, and around your organs. This is visceral fat, and it is a completely different animal. Here's why visceral fat is so dangerous. It's not just sitting there. It is metabolically active, like a factory pumping out inflammatory chemicals 24-7. Inflammatory chemicals that make insulin resistance worse. So the fat creates inflammation. The inflammation worsens insulin resistance. The insulin resistance causes more fat storage, and round and round we go. This is why studies show women gain 4 to 14% more visceral fat during the menopause and perimenopause transition, even when their total body weight sometimes even stays the same. You're not imagining that your belly is getting bigger or that it's looking different. The fat has literally reallocated. And here's the part that makes it even harder. Estrogen used to provide natural anti-inflammatory protection. Now that's gone now. So you've lost the traffic controller and the fire extinguisher at the same time. Now, if this inflammation insulin connection is making you realize that there's much more going on, then I just need to eat less. We offer free discovery calls where you can speak with our patient advocates. They can assess your specific hormonal situation and help you understand what's actually driving your belly fat. You can either text number on the screen or you can check out the link in the description if you want to explore that. But first, let me show you exactly how bad this cycle gets because there's another hormone involved that almost nobody talks about. When estrogen levels drop during perimenopause and menopause, another hormone called FSH rises. FSH normally tells your ovaries to release estrogen, but during menopause, your ovaries can't respond. So FSH keeps climbing higher and higher, like someone yelling louder when they're not getting an answer. What the research shows shocked me. FSH elevation directly correlates with increased insulin resistance, completely independent of body weight. Let me say that again, because this is important. Same weight, same food intake, same exercise, but because FSH is elevated, your body becomes more insulin resistant anyways. This is one of the hidden drivers I think nobody talks about. When you're insulin resistant, insulin levels are staying elevated. And when insulin is high, your body is locked into fat storage mode. It physically cannot access your stored fat anymore. It has a hard time accessing your stored fat for energy. You're carrying around tens and thousands of calories for fuel that your body refuses to burn. This is why 30 to 50% of postmenopausal women develop metabolic syndrome. That's the combination of belly fat, high blood pressure, high blood sugar issues, and cholesterol problems that dramatically increase heart disease risk. It's not weakness. It's not lack of willpower. It's a hormonal cascade that changes the rules of the game. Remember Nancy, she was eating 1100 calories and she was gaining body fat. Now you understand why. She wasn't failing the diet. Her diet was failing her because it was designed for a hormonal environment that she no longer has. If that just reframed how you think about menopause and weight gain, hit that subscribe button right now because we put out four videos per week deep diving into the hormonal side of weight loss that most doctors never explain. And it really helps with the channel big time. So go ahead and hit that button right now and turn on the bell. And what I'm about to show you why traditional approaches backfire is gonna change everything. So. What happens when a menopausal woman tries traditional approaches anyways? She cuts calories, she's hitting the treadmill, she's eating less. At first it might work, a few pounds come off, but then something shifts. Your body interprets chronic caloric restriction as a famine signal. It responds by slowing your metabolism, what I call 
battery saving mode. Thyroid function decreases, energy levels crash, and here's the brutal part for menopausal women. Specifically, menopause already causes muscle loss. It's called sarcopenia, and it starts accelerating in your 40s and 50s, and then when you add aggressive dieting on top of that, you're not just losing fat, you're losing a shit ton of muscle, and the very tissue that's keeping your metabolic running efficiently. So less muscle mass means lower metabolic rate. Lower metabolic rate means you need even fewer calories to maintain your weight, and so now you have to eat even less, and that trap gets tighter. Nancy had all the classic signs. She was freezing indoors with a sweater and blanket, cloudy thinking that she couldn't shake, zero energy by 2 p.m. Her body wasn't being stubborn, it was shutting down to survive. I personally went through a same cycle for damn near a decade. I lost 100 pounds, I regained weight, I lost it again, I regained it away. About 50 pounds every year, I didn't regain the whole 100. But year after year, I thought I just needed more discipline, more willpower, a stricter diet. I was wrong. The answer wasn't trying harder, it was understanding that you can't out-diet a hormonal problem. So if traditional approaches are making it worse, what actually works? See, the answer isn't just one thing. It's a coordinated system, five pieces that work together to address the hormonal cascade that we just talked about. Okay, piece number one, strategic fasting to directly lower insulin and restore insulin sensitivity. Number two, GLP-1 medication support to make that journey sustainable. Number three, some fat mobilization support for stubborn belly fat, making it easier for your body to tap into the fat and burn it when you're fasting. Number four, hormonal foundation with bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And then number five, this is non-negotiable, optimized protein intake and resistance training. Now, this is video two of a four-part menopausal series, depending how you guys respond, I might extend this menopausal series. In video one of this series, I covered the practical how to make this easier version. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to optimize GLP-1 specifically for menopause. But today I wanted to show you why the system works, starting with the most important piece that directly reverses insulin resistance, strategic fasting, what we call flow fasting, which stands for fasting like our ancestors. This works because of one simple principle. When you fast therapeutically, and you must do this under medical supervision, 24 hours to even 48, insulin levels drop dramatically. And when insulin finally drops, your fat cells unlock. This is completely different from chronic caloric restriction. With calorie restriction, you're eating smaller amounts every single day. Insulin levels are bouncing up and down constantly. The fat cells never fully unlock. Now you might've heard that fasting is bad for menopausal women, that it crashes hormones or causes problems. Here's what the research actually shows. A 2020 alternate day fasting study found no significant difference in outcomes based on menopausal status. Multiple trials show intermittent fasting improves insulin sensitivity and reduces inflammation in menopausal women, especially when combined with resistance training and adequate protein intake. That's the key. Let me say that again. If you don't counter your fasting with feasting windows that have enough protein and enough calories, then you just go right back into chronic starvation mode, which is the same thing as daily caloric restriction. <laughs> By the way, this is why my book is called Fast, Feast, and Flourish, because I'm a big proponent in this dichotomy that has to exist around your fasting windows. Now, if you want me to make a deep dive video breaking down the complete flow fasting protocol for menopausal women, the exact timing, what breaks a fast, how to build it up safely, let me know in the comments what part of that would be the most helpful to you. Now, fasting works even better when you have the right support. GLP-1 medications like terzepatide and semaglutide, personally, I'm a bigger fan of terzepatide, but they do two things that matter here. They quiet the food noise, so they just make fasting dramatically easier and they improve the insulin response. You see, most people don't realize this, but in the major GLP-1 trials, 60 to 71% of participants were women in their 40s and 50s. This isn't some untested approach for menopause. It's been validated in exactly this population. Results show 15 to 22% body weight loss. But here's how I think about it differently. GLP-1s are a tool, not a permanent solution. You have to use them while you're fixing underlying insulin resistance. Then you taper as your metabolism heals. In video three, I'll show you exactly how we optimize these medications for menopause. For stubborn menopause, belly fat specifically, some providers are working with a peptide called AOD9604. My providers love this peptide. I truthfully think this is the hidden piece to make menopausal fasting a reality. The mechanism is based on growth hormone biology, but AOD is not growth hormone. It's a fragment of the human growth hormone, specifically the fat loss portion. This helps to mobilize fat from visceral storage. Now, I need to be transparent here. Large human scale trials of AOD have been mixed, and it's not an FDA approved medication for weight loss. However, patients that I coach who use this peptide are reporting improvements in that midsection level. It's easier for them to get into deeper fasting. It's one of the tools that our providers use for fat mobilization support. Hormone replacement therapy, specifically estrogen and progesterone delivered through a skin patch rather than a pill, improves insulin sensitivity and helps prevent that subcutaneous to visceral shift that we talked about earlier. Testosterone helps to preserve muscle 
muscle mass. There's a window of opportunity here. Research shows that the best results come when HRT is started within 10 years of menopause. And the earlier within that window, the better. HRT alone won't solve belly fat, but it creates the foundation that makes everything else work better. Always discuss this with your healthcare provider to see if it's right for you. Let me know in the comments, what is the biggest symptom right now that you're dealing with, the thing that's frustrating you the most? And I'll share what we've looked at first in our clinic when patients deal with the same thing. Now, for the two pieces that are completely non-negotiable. Remember, menopause already causes muscle loss. Any weight loss protocol that doesn't prioritize muscle preservation strategies like weight training and protein intake is going to accelerate that loss. And muscle is your metabolic engine. Protein requirements are higher than you think. Research shows that menopausal women need about one gram of protein per pound of target body weight. That's significantly more than standard recommendations, combined with resistance training two to three times per week minimum. Now here's the challenge. GLP-1 meds suppress appetite which is great for weight loss, but it makes hitting protein targets sometimes feel impossible. This is exactly where coaching becomes critical. Any protocol without these two pieces isn't a solution. It's an accelerated muscle and bone loss waiting to happen. Now, can some women figure this out on their own? Absolutely. If you're disciplined about tracking, research oriented and willing to experiment, you can make progress. But here's what I've learned coaching thousands of patients. Every woman's hormonal situation is different. When you started menopause and perimenopause, whether you're on HRT, how severe your insulin resistance is, what medications you're taking, how your body's responding to fasting. The women who get stuck usually aren't lacking effort. They're just following generic advice that wasn't designed and customized for their specific situation. Customization isn't the problem. It's actually the solution. Nancy, follow our protocol for four months. We didn't start with aggressive fasting. We started with a four week metabolic reset to get her out of that shutdown state. Then we built up the flow fasting while protecting her muscle mass. The result, 18 pounds lost four inches off of her waist. And most importantly, her fasting insulin levels, they normalized. I remember she told us for the first time, Dr. Jones, I feel like my body is working with me and not against me. And I personally understand that feeling all too well. Now, if you want me to make a video showing exactly which lab markers that we check for menopausal women, insulin resistance, inflammatory panels, thyroid panels, so that you know what to ask your doctor for when you go in for your testing, let me know in the comments if that would be helpful to you. So let's bring this all together. Menopause triggers an estrogen insulin cascade that shifts fat storage to your belly, independent of diet or exercise. Traditional calorie cutting makes it worse by triggering metabolic shutdown and accelerating muscle loss. The solution is a hormone aware protocol with five coordinated pieces. Now, if you want help customizing this protocol for your specific situation, figuring out where your insulin resistance actually is, dialing in the fasting timing, coordinating with your hormones, and making sure that you're hitting protein targets without feeling like eating is a chore, that's exactly what we do. You can either text the number on the screen or you can check out the link in the description and you'll get to connect with one of our patient advocates. They're going to walk through your history, what you've already tried, and the goals that you're chasing so that we can figure out the right approach for you. They're going to discuss what it looks like to work with me, my coaches, my medical team. They're going to review programs and pricing so that you can see what long-term success with our team could actually look like for you. Because here's the truth. This belly fat trap is escapable, but you just need the right protocol built for your body, your hormones, and your life. Now, food, 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 food is such a huge piece in your journey. If you haven't already seen this video right here. These are the top 20 groceries that I recommend that you have stocked in your refrigerator right now for optimal metabolic health on your GLP-1, even off your GLP-1 medication journey too. So if you haven't seen it, check that video out and I'll see you guys on the next one.